Uh, hello. The uh, 60 millimeter refractor telescope has probably been the most uh, common telescope sold over the years. You now, for a lot of reasons, uh, for beginners going back 30 or 40 years, uh, this was the most common model available in stores and uh, uh, different department stores, things like that. So there's a lot of these telescopes around. A lot of people have them. And they don't use them, they were given to them, they inherited them. Um, and it's a still a common scope that's bought by people today, the newer versions of them. So with this video is to help you uh, get the most use out of it. If you have one sitting around uh, that you got in some way, bought it yourself and you know stopped using it or it was given to you, uh, this particular telescope was given to me by a neighbor whose uh, father-in-law died. And I think this is about a 19, early 1990s telescope. It's a uh, Celestron uh, 21066 uh, WAS A. So I'm going to try to show you some things you can do to make sure you get the most out of this uh, telescope. Keep in mind that uh, Messier, who uh, discovered all the different objects that many people try to search for in the sky, he used a telescope somewhat similar to this, uh, probably not as powerful to find all of those objects, which means uh, you really can find a lot of things. But of course, he had dark skies. You know, this was a couple hundred years ago, and uh, most of us don't have dark skies, so we do have to be realistic in what we can see with a 60 millimeter refractor. So let's go through what we can do with it and how you can get the most out of it. Uh, first of all, if you look at the tripod here, uh, a lot of the tripods, you know, uh, might be kind of cheap, flimsy. This one happens to have uh, wooden legs, which is what I really like about it. Uh, makes it much more sturdy because there's nothing worse than a uh, telescope tripod that jiggles and moves around. If you have a tripod like that, best thing you can do is uh, try to add some weight, hang some weights down from a uh, uh, the base of the telescope to put more weight down on the legs and that should stabilize it some that might make a difference another thing is to shorten the legs uh, right now i have the legs uh, extended pretty far but if the shorter you have the legs extended the more stable the uh, telescope is going to be and the mount is going to be now if that if, if that makes uh, using a telescope difficult you know where you got to be stooping down uh, perhaps you can rig something up where you're putting it on a deck. If you have some solid structure that's up a foot or two, you can put it right on the edge of that structure and then stand uh, off of the structure and use it. So that might be something you can do. Um, but, you know, there, there's limits to what you can do. You just got to try to work with what you got unless you want to spend money on a new telescope. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest uh, things you can do to make your 60 millimeter refractor work better uh, to find things much easier because that's one of the biggest problems is finding things uh, quickly uh, without a lot of hassle and that's your finder scope now what I've done here is I've added a uh, nice 6 by 30 uh, finder scope okay so this is a pretty good basic finder scope and it makes finding things a lot easier it can actually find uh, even some of the uh, uh, darker sky objects like nebulas or uh, globular clusters, you can find them in the, in the finder scope. Now this uh, came originally with this finder scope. This is a 5x24, which you'll often see. That's a, a really cheap uh, finder scope. It's really hard to uh, use. It's hard to, uh, to uh, focus it in and uh, calibrate it with the rest of the scope. And it gets out of alignment very easily. It has a very narrow field of view. Trying to use one of these will just lead to frustration, so you're better off not using it. A better alternative would be to use a red dot finder, like this Easy Finder 2, and I did have one installed on that, and it works good. Uh, it can help you find your bright stars, your planets, pretty easily. The problem with an Easy Finder, a red dot finder, is that uh, finding anything other than really bright objects is nearly impossible with it, because there's no magnification, and you cannot see through the site anything except bright objects. You know, when you're looking through the site, all you're going to see is the brightest objects in the sky. You won't see anything that is not really, really bright. And that makes it hard to find your darker sky objects. 
So that's why a uh, finder scope like a 6x30, I wouldn't put anything larger than that on a 60 millimeter scope like that just because it's just not worth the expense and it's more weight you're going to put on the scope which could get it out of balance. But that's a really good finder scope to get. So I did install that. That will really help you a lot once you get it aligned with the regular scope. Okay. Um, another thing you can do uh, to uh, increase the quality of your scope is look at your eyepieces you have. Okay, a lot of our older scopes and less expensive scopes probably come with these Ramsden eyepieces. They look like this. So they're very lightweight, they're very cheap, and they're just at the very bottom end of eyepieces. So what you want to do is upgrade from those Ramsden to at least a counter eyepiece. This is a counter. So this is a 20 millimeter Ramsden. This is a counter. See how much bigger? Uh, the hole is that you're looking through, okay, much better, and it's a better quality lens. So counters are not real expensive. Um, you know, it's hard to find on Amazon or new. eBay is a good place to check for counters. Okay, so that's this is a 20 millimeter counter, and this is a 20 millimeter Rams, and see the bit difference. And it makes a big difference when you're looking at it. Okay, and then this is a 20 millimeter or a 10 millimeter. Uh, counter. Here's a 10 millimeter Ramsden. Look how small the holes are in the Ramsden. Okay, so counters are much better eyepieces, and they're not real expensive. Okay, they're a little harder to find. Okay, than the Plossels, which we'll look at next. Plossels are uh, probably the better eyepieces, and these are more expensive. So if you can only afford counter, I would definitely go with that. I would definitely upgrade your telescope. Plossel is heavier. It's bigger. So here's a 25, I don't have a 20 millimeter plot, so here's a 25 millimeter, and then that's next to the counter. So you can see uh, even bigger view, wider view, and it's a higher quality eyepiece. And then here is a 10, again comparing the 10 counter to the 10 plossel. So plossel's way more because they have more uh, lenses inside of them, okay, but they are a better quality eyepiece. So, that definitely will increase the, uh, the quality of your experience if you have better eyepieces in the telescope. Okay, so you want to have, you know, a 20 is a bare minimum for a 60 millimeter. You want to have, because that will give you your wider views uh, where you can help find things in the sky. Uh, I would recommend you get at least a 25, whether it be a counter or a plossel because it just gives you a larger field of view where you can find objects and a lot of objects look much better with less magnification. Okay, So you definitely want to have probably your two eyepieces to start with would be like a 25 millimeter or a 20 if that's the best you can do either a counter or a plossel and then a 10 millimeter is a good uh, is a good eyepiece for zooming in closer up. Okay, So a 25 millimeter plossel or counter, for example, I believe I forgot to write this down. It's about a 26 uh, x, uh, 26 x uh, look. A 10 millimeter is a 90 uh, x. Okay, and that's plenty good to use for planets and uh, for uh, the moon. You'll get really good views with that. Another thing you can do uh, to get even more clear of these because remember a 60 millimeter uh, telescope you know it's on the small end so it's not collecting a lot of light and so to get more light into your uh, eyepiece you could also consider getting a 30 or a 40 millimeter eyepiece like that this is a 40 this will collect a lot more light because it's a wider field of view because it'll give a much less magnification so it's this is a heavy eyepiece okay um, and they cost a little more. 30, 40 millimeter eyepieces tend to be on the high end, 30, 40 bucks maybe, whether it be counter or plossel. So that's something else that you can think of. So one thing you've got to keep in mind when you add a larger, a larger finder like this, and you add, uh, if you use plossels or counters, you're going to put more weight on the telescope. Okay. Now this is an equatorial mount, but you'll see you might have issues also with a regular altazimuth mount. So when you do that, you might notice that I have, see, weight 
I added, had to put extra weight on here because it was getting out of balance because of the extra weight I put on this. So if you find that when you're using the equatorial mount that the, the telescope is kind of moving around on its own, okay, then it means there's not enough weight on here. So I had to add extra weight. This is like a pound weight. I put on extra and that stabilized it pretty well. I can move this equatorial mount and it doesn't wobble and move around on its own because I was able to adjust the weight. So you might have to do that to put a weight on it to stabilize this when you're using an equatorial mount. And uh, it might even help with an altazimus mount. You might have you just have to check and see what the extra weight of a larger finder and better eyepieces does. Now what can you realistically expect to see with a 60 millimeter refractor telescope? It's important to have realistic expectations. Okay? What they're definitely going to be good for is the planets, Jupiter and Saturn for sure. With a 10 millimeter eyepiece, uh, you'll be able to see the bands of Jupiter. Certainly you can see the moons of Jupiter without a problem. So you can see several, two or three of the major uh, color bands of Jupiter very clearly, okay, as long as your telescope's optics are functioning properly. Um, so with a 10 millimeter, I'm saying, if I didn't say a 10 millimeter eyepiece, you should be able to see that. Uh, Saturn, you have no problem seeing the rings of Saturn. Um, you probably won't be able to see the Cassini division, okay, but it still looks awful really good, even without seeing that. So 10 millimeter, or yeah, 10 millimeter uh, eyepiece should give you Saturn. Mars, you're right on the edge of being able to see some detail on Mars. A 10 millimeter may not quite do it to be able to see more than a few glimpses of the poles of Mars. If you want to definitely be able to see more detail on Mars, you'll need to go to at least a probably a 7.5 millimeter eyepiece. There are limits to how uh, small of an eyepiece you can go to where your uh, telescope will be unable really to clearly get images. So for this particular one, um, 7.5 millimeter, which will give me 120x, is the maximum I can get out of this without the image degrading. And a way to check that is to look at, usually all telescopes have information printed on them. See? So this gives you what you want to get is your uh, your diameter, this is 60 millimeter as you can see, and the F ratio, which is 900 millimeters, the focal length. So there are uh, programs on the internet where you can plug in those numbers and then put in the eyepiece size and it will tell you how much magnification you'll get and it'll also tell you if you're exceeding your magnification limits. In other words, if the image is going to start degrading and getting less and less clear, which you don't want. So again, for my case, for this telescope, because of 900 millimeter focal length and 60 millimeter diameter, uh, 7.5 millimeter eyepiece is the highest I can go. That gives me 120x. And you should be able to make out details on Mars, especially uh, when it's, you know, at one of its closer orbits to Earth, you should be able to make out details on Mars, some good details, with a 60 millimeter scope. Now the other obvious thing you can see really well is the moon. Okay, this is a 60 millimeter refractor is great for the moon. You'll get lots of good images of that, as long as you can hold the mount steady. What about other things? Uh, nebulas, star clusters, galaxies. Well, if you're in a normal place in our country where there's light pollution, moderate to heavy, it's going to be very difficult to see most of those things. Things like the Orion Nebula, Great Hercules Globular Cluster, you'll probably be able to see unless you're, you know, even uh, in fairly light polluted areas. So there's a limit to that, that you'll be able to see. Remember, if you go out to dark sky areas, either you live in a very dark sky area, out in the, way out in the country, away from city lights, you know, I'm talking 40, 50, 60, 100 miles away from big cities, you'll be close to where uh, Messier and some of the early astronomers were with dark skies, and you'll be able to see galaxies. You'll be able to see a lot of different nebulas, um, a lot of different uh, globular clusters, because they could see them hundreds of years ago. But most of us aren't in that situation. So uh, 
you know, there's going to be a limit to what you can see. And the way it's going to look is not going to be as high a quality, as bright of an image as uh, better telescopes, more expensive telescopes. So you just kind of have to see one other target that you can look for uh, are double or triple star systems. Uh, a lot of people get a lot of uh, pleasure out of looking for those. And that's something you can see pretty much in any place, even in light polluted skies. Uh, you can see there's a lot of double or triple star systems that you can find. If you're in the kind of suburban areas with moderate light pollution, you'll get even more. And uh, what you do if when you find a star, then you have to switch to the higher power eyepiece. And then you'll see a star, one star turn into two or even three stars. And if you uh, put the uh, images out of focus slightly, you'll be able to see the colors easier of the stars. You'll see more bluish, uh, more bluish colors, yellowish, orange, okay? You won't see just only white. You'll see the colors stand out if you get it slightly out of focus once you find them. So a lot of people like doing that. So a 60 millimeter will work well for a lot of those. It won't get you all of them because it's not high enough power, but that's something else you can do with this scope. Okay, so 60 millimeter, you know, it's a matter of working with it. Okay, any telescope that you can get steady where you can find objects easily, and that's why the finder is so important because it's hard to find things if you don't have a decent finder in the sky, and that can be frustrating. So that's the most important thing to upgrade is a finder, but keep in mind it's gonna add more weight, and if you upgrade your eyepieces to at least a counter or possibly plossal, you might have to add weight, okay, onto the other side of the telescope to balance it out, okay? So hopefully these tips will help you out if you are considering buying a 60 millimeter telescope or you already have one and you wanna get additional use out of it. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, leave a post and I'll do what I can to help you out. See you later.